Hi, and welcome to Cooking with Bay. I'm your host, Lindsay, and today I am making animal-based homemade marshmallows that are healthy for you. That's right. So these include only four ingredients. Let's get started. Not only do I love crafting animal-based recipes that nourish, I'm equally passionate about movements that aid our journey, such as these delicious treats that bolster strength where it matters most, our ligaments and joints. So let's dive into the prep work. We will start by greasing our pan with coconut oil. Now, if you have any other fats, such as animal fats, to grease your dish with, go ahead and do that. I like to use coconut oil because it's a little sweeter and we're making marshmallows here, so that is up to you. Next step, we are going to put four tablespoons of gelatin in a bowl and then we'll add water so that it blooms. So now this is from grass-fed, pasture-raised bovine. So here's one and four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of water and it will just immediately start forming a jelly-like consistency. So then we will leave that for about five minutes, place it to the side. Sometimes I like to mix it in with a spatula a little bit just so that the water can absorb the gelatin with a little more consistency. So while the gelatin is blooming, I'm gonna go ahead and start warming up my honey. So I'm adding a half a cup of reverse osmosis water or filtered water for quality purposes. And then I am adding an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And then I will be adding a half a cup of raw honey. So I'm not heating the honey to temperatures above 95 degrees Fahrenheit because that is what is the normal temperature for internal hive honey. And so when you go above that, that's when you start to compromise enzymes and lose the antimicrobial properties. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my stove on to a medium to low temperature. I have my thermometer in there and you can kind of use any thermometer. This is what's known as a candy monitor thermometer just because it sort of lays on the surface. So making these marshmallows too, you'll have to work a little bit swiftly in the kitchen. Baking can be a little bit tricky, but just making sure things are prepped and ready to go as much as you can to just avoid the gelatin from getting too hard and from the honey getting too hot. So just mixing it a little bit here. And then this thermometer is gonna tell me when it hits 95. And I'm just doing this to liquefy the honey a little bit more. It's already almost there. Of course, you can heat it too. And if it goes over 95, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But if you like to keep the nutrient density of this dish, I wouldn't heat it really above 95. Whoop, okay. Turning it off. It reached 95. So I'm gonna set this aside while the gelatin blooms just a little bit more. We have two minutes left. Next up, you take your gelatin and then you scoop it into a stand mixer. So this is after five minutes. See that? It gets nice and, I guess they call it bloomy, but gelatinous, really. So you can also use an electric hand mixer. Um, doing it by hand might be a little bit difficult, but trust me, investing in a, a, an electrical hand mixer or something like this is so valuable, especially after tasting these marshmallows. So then you'll start by turning the mixer on low and slowly adding your honey liquid mixture. You can smell it, it's so delicious. And during this time of year when we just really entered fall, you can actually probably even put a little bit of cinnamon in here and make it super festive for the season. Then once the liquid is done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up higher. And then you leave it for about five to 10 minutes depending on how your mixer performs. But what you want, the result is something of a marshmallowy 
creamy texture. And then if you lift the sort of whisk up, you get these soft peaks. And then you'll have to just really work quickly, which we'll show you soon. So in preparation to transfer the marshmallow cream to the baking dish, I like to grease with coconut oil my spatula so I can work faster. Okay, so it's getting to that nice marshmallowy consistency. I'm gonna drop it down and you're gonna see those peaks. See those peaks in there? That's when we're ready to transfer it. Okay, now you have to work quickly if you want this to be smooth and before it forms into something a little bit harder. Some gelatin that didn't really mix very well in there, but that's okay. We just learned for next time to better be prepped next time and mix that gelatin in there in the beginning process, but look at that. Also, you may notice that the spatula that I'm using is silicone and not plastic, because plastic doesn't belong in this kitchen. So then you take your newly created marshmallow recipe and then you cover it and you keep it at room temperature for about six or so hours, maybe even overnight, and that's it, set it and forget it, and then the next day or six hours later, you can start cutting it and forming it into the size that you want. Not only do I love crafting animal-based recipes that nourish, I'm equally passionate about movements that aid our journey, such as these delicious treats that bolster strength where it matters most, our ligaments and joints. Okay, six hours later, let's see what we got. We have marshmallows! Look at. Ugh, super cool. So this is how I get it out of the pan. I use some sort of spatula or a little tool. Try to get the edges. Okay, now that we have the edges all up, and of course you can handle it with your hands too. Don't be afraid to use your hands as tools. And now we're gonna flip it. Marshmallows! Okay, next step is cutting it into your desired bite-sized pieces. So what I did to make this a little bit easier was I greased the knife with a little bit of coconut oil because it's a little tricky sometimes to work with, but you get the point, so look at that jiggly. Look how neat these are. These are marshmallows. It took me like 15 minutes to make, and you can have these at room temperature, it doesn't need to be carried around in a refrigerator. Of course, don't leave it in any warm cars or anything like that. It will melt, it's still delicate, but this is a great thing to take to go. It's a great thing to drive by your refrigerator and pop in your mouth for that extra protein and a little bit of an energy boost too as well. Okay, and once you've cubed up your marshmallows, you can go ahead and put it in a storage container airtight and put it in your fridge and that should last you maybe up to seven days or so. I tend to keep mine a little bit longer but that is in the eye of the beholder. Okay this is the finished product now time to taste it. Very excited about this and guess who also gets to have a bite. That's right these are also dog friendly. Great for hair skin and nails for them and also their gut as well as for us too. Woo! Nice. These marshmallows are so tasty. These are great to make with your kids. It's a good family adventure to do together, but it's also probably really great for sporting events. I haven't made marshmallows. This is my first time doing this, but with the gelatin as well as a little bit of honey, this doesn't overload your stomach, but gives you that quick energy boost. So you can be sure that I am taking this skiing on the slopes with me this season. So. If you're a triathlete or if you're a marathoner, instead of doing those goop packets, this is a far superior choice than those gel packets that you would take on the trails with you. So you could do this, take it hiking. It could be great at room temperature. So love these marshmallows and it only took me 15 minutes to cook. Thank you so much for joining me here on Cooking with Bay. Please like, share, and don't forget to come back and comment and tell me how you made them. How did they turn out for you? What did you use them for? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you again. See you next time.